apart from the people who are you know students and scholars in archaeology and cultural heritage there's a lot of people who are interested in heritage you know, we all have our own heritage we, we know we're interested in what our fathers our grandfathers our great-grandfathers did so we're wanting to make this conference open globally as much as we can and what we're doing through the Kickstarter program is offering conference registration and conference um, various um, levels of conference of participating being part of the conversation uh, through Kickstarter and then th as that makes that facility available the funds go to help people to get to the conference to give you a better conference. So for the first time all of the sessions of this conference will be recorded so they will all be available online and we're inviting people to register to be able to access these recordings so they'll be available live and they'll be available in an archive form. So it's a great teaching material for people who are teaching in this area. It's a great learning material. It's a great resource to just dip in and out of over the next few years. Uh, and we and the funds that we're asking for people for online registration will go directly towards, directly solely, without any overheads or hidden anything. Every cent will go towards the the airfares of getting to people there from other parts of the world. WAC has already promised registration and accommodation for over 200 scholars, so we're now help trying to help them get the airfares to get there. One of the hot topics at the moment is who owns the bones. Some people might have been following the Kennewick debate in the US, uh, where Native um, American remains were uh, found and scientists took control of it and the indigenous groups didn't want that research done. So the argument there is really about scientific rights to knowledge versus indigenous rights to control their cultural heritage and the, and the heritage of their, bone, their ancestors, their bones. And it's not an either or situation because there are scientists like myself who believe in indigenous control over indigenous human remains. So if you want to understand those kind of debates then you can be part of that. If you really want to um, engage then there's the possibility that you can ask an expert a question you can through this process through Kickstarter you can ask the expert of your choice a question and we will attempt to get an answer for that question from that person in some of the forums you'll have an opportunity to actually have your question asked in the forum and see what people answer answer to that so there's an opportunity to be really engaged in this yourself to be a part of the conference not just hearing about it or reading about it or, or, or whatever, but actually contributing to the people who are getting there and contributing to the, the discussion. Hello, I'm Ines Domingo and I'm the current secretary of WAC. When I joined WAC in 2003, I was a PhD student and I have an interest in expanding my international networks because it was important for, um, for me to get a proper job. But um, I was also interested in learning how archaeology was conducted in different parts of the world beyond the Western perspectives that I learned at the university. And so for this purpose, I think that WAC is um, the right forum to attend since WAC conferences are usually attended by scholars from more than 70 countries and this includes people from low-income countries who usually can't afford to attend international forums. To me, WAC is also a unique forum because um, you can discuss topics related to the socio-political socio and cultural realities and contexts in which archaeology is developed in the 21st century. And it is also a way to help those who have the moral rights over the cultural heritage um, to be heard and respected. And I'm here referring to the Indigenous Peoples and First Nations. Personally, WAC has been also very helpful to me. As I've said, I joined WAC in 2003, and I, soon after I became the membership secretary. That position meant a lot of voluntary job, voluntary work, but also gave me the opportunity to start an extensive network of international connections to work together and learn with an international group of scholars uh, with quite diverse backgrounds, and diverse socio-political agendas and contexts and different cultural realities. Eight years later, at, which is like three years ago, 
and in part thanks to the experience acquired at the Executive of WAC and the international networks developed through WAC, I've been able to achieve a position as a full professor at the age of 35, which is quite uncommon in my country. WAC has also given me the opportunity to travel all around the world and to discuss a great variety of topics with scholars and indigenous people from all over the world. And WAC has also given me the opportunity to get a world perspective of the inequalities and ethical issues related with the development of archaeological activities in, in the world. For this reason, I invite you to come and join WAC and to attend WAC 7 and experience a different way of understanding archaeology and expanding your international web networks.